I'm John King, the large format printing specialist for Showcase Photo and Video uh, in Cheshire Bridge here in Atlanta, Georgia. And one of our hottest items over the last year, it's one year old, is the Epson Pro Stylus 4900 printer. And uh, what I wanted to do is give you a brief overview if you're interested in looking into this printer, but more importantly, I want to set up a little video help to um, train those that have purchased it. So congratulations to those who have them being installed right now. One of the earliest questions, first questions we do get from, uh, from people wanting to look at this printer because it is a fairly large printer for the low end of the professional market. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a reference on size if you've got shelves to put it in. You know, we're basically looking at 16 or so inches on the height. It is rather deep. It comes into about 31 inches in such a way to allow for this whole thing to open up. So in terms of putting it on a cabinet, it is, uh, it's reasonably deep. And uh, the, width, the width, of course, is, uh, again, about three feet you can see on my yardstick. So it's a pretty hefty, beefy little printer for everything that it uh, stands for. <clears throat> Let me tell you a little bit too that the uh, Epson 4900, it, one of its strengths is it has the most advanced heads that Epson have ever made, the micro piezo heads, uh, and very few printers now, just the 4900, 7900, 9900, and the 1180 have the brand new heads in it. And that really is contributing to a lot of stability, lack of clogging on the heads, and any kind of traditional problems that you uh, might have experienced in the past. The second most important thing is that it is an HDR printer, meaning it's a high dynamic range. And that's a fancy word for there are two additional colors. The magic of this printer takes place in the ink set. So we have uh, 11 inks in total on two sides, five and six, and the orange and the green addition really make this a powerful wide color gamut, perfect for the pro uh, uh, photo RGB color space that is so touted by Adobe these days. While we're in here, I'll also show you that uh, changing out the cartridges is very simple. It's a snap in, snap out, and they are large. They're 200 milliliter giving you a tremendous economy versus some of the smaller in same class printers. Epson's really addressed the size of the ink cartridge. So changing the inks out, uh, there's an indicator we'll show you on the menu that tells you the status of all of your inks. And uh, again, mostly all contributed by the chip that's in the, every cartridge. And that chip, of course, is the indicator for uh, communicating the amount of ink that's been used to the printer. So, changing out the inks is quite simple, and then these, are, these window doors are closed, and we're good to go. One of the critical uh, uh, things for training is to learn how to load the printer, some of the basics, and we're gonna talk a little bit about that and show you some technique. It does take a roll of paper. It also takes a manual feed from above, it takes a manual feed from the front, and it takes a cassette feed. So you can open this up. It's a lot easier than I make it look. And we'll talk a little bit about how the cassette works. Very popular for a lot of folks who like flat sheets. And in fact, we'll go ahead and start there. The, um, the cassette is adjustable for all the way up to uh, 16, 13 by 19 sheets. And uh, that we, I want to show you this a little bit. There's a grip here in the cassette that allows it to expand from the basic uh, as it comes off the shelf. And we do in fact have to expand it to put the very large sheets in it. So let's open this all the way up and take out the previous paper and load a large sheet of course, I, I didn't mention the printer is 17 inches uh, width, and we could put the sheet in face down, print side down. All the way in, that's the largest sheet that will go in it. And then you can just tight, tighten all of this up a little bit. 
so it's nice and tight here, okay? And that's the largest sheet size. You just push the thing. It won't go all the way in now. It'll go in until it snaps, and that will stick out. These, all of these uh, receiving trays work very nicely, and there's a small little tray. <laughs> There's a small little tray, and the, this flips up to catch the paper as it comes out. Very simple process. Okay? Now, before we move on to the other loading, let's go ahead and look a little bit at the menu, because this is also important. The second big decision is to activate the menu with the OK button. It'll show you the printer is ready. And this is a significant icon. That shows the sheet. And down on the controls, we see the choice of roll or sheet. And so the question is you press that button to activate this window. So we can select the uh, roll paper with a cut, automatic cut at the end of the print, roll paper without a cut, and cut sheet. And then you simply hit enter, and you now see the cut sheet icon. And we'll change that when we go to load some roll paper. Okay, once that's set, the paper's in place, then we can proceed with the actual printing. And anytime you're printing from an application, whether it's InDesign or Photoshop, if you're printing directly to the printer, you will want to match your page size in the printer window of the application to match what's in the printer so it can automatically proceed through. Otherwise, errors will show up here and adjustments can be made. It's not that complex, but it's a good idea to have your machine set up exactly right ahead of time and then you can move forward. So let's now switch to the second option. We'll take our paper out of the cassette and we can then close up our cassette from the extension and go to the loading up above. And the loading above is face out, face print side out, and then simply, we've already, we, are, we already have our window set up for the page, page feed. Bring this up a little bit to support the back of the paper. Um, I think this does generally work a little bit better, but for one print at a time instead of multiple, and you can put, of course, several sheets in the cassette. You could have 10 or 15. Fill that cassette so you don't have to keep going through the manual. But if you do want to do manual and you're using fine art paper, things that you don't want to have any creasing or rolling on, uh, thicker papers. Back to our OK button to set up our paper. And in this case, we still have it set to sheet, which is fine because we are feeding it one sheet at a time. And so let's go look at how that process is, is extended. Now this is a little touchy-feely uh, experience, but once the paper is set in there lightly, then just snug it down. And when you snug it down, you'll see the, the menu say, press the down button. As soon as it knows there's a paper in there, so you press this and it goes into an automatic load. Okay, and now that it has completely set the paper in the right position, the menu confirms that it is ready to print. And then you just proceed. In this case now, from the application, whether Photoshop or etc., in the page setup, this would be considered the sheet cut feed manual upper versus the tray. So you've got the rear manual feed.